Join U.S. Corrupt Cops on YouTube as we expose police misconduct and safeguard citizens. Subscribe, like, and share to support our mission for justice and accountability. If you like this video, press 1. Miss Maddie's initial error is instinctively undoing her seatbelt without a dash cam to validate that she did so herself. This action practically hands the officer reasonable suspicion for the stop on a silver platter. Whether or not Miss Maddie was wearing a seatbelt becomes a matter of debate, ultimately boiling down to her word against the officers in court. After being pulled over, it's advisable to remain still, turn on your interior light, and place your hands on the steering wheel until instructed otherwise by the officer. Avoid doing anything that might fuel the officer's suspicions or further justify the stop. Miss Maddie admits her mistake to the officer. I just took my seatbelt off as a habit. Yeah, I just took this off, just so you know, I wasn't driving without a this habit. Huh? That's the reason you're being stopped. No, I just took it off. Miss Maddie is trying to be truthful with the officer but the officer exploits her honesty, interpreting it as an admission of guilt. As seen earlier in the video, the officer passed Miss Maddie while traveling in the opposite direction, providing him with a clear view of the seatbelt if that was his focus. It's crucial to never provide an officer with more information than absolutely necessary. Miss Maddie's prompt defense only provided the officer with reasonable suspicion. Without her dash cam, Miss Maddie would lack evidence to support her claim. However, her nervous and defensive demeanor could be used as evidence to justify the officer's suspicion. I swear to God, I, I, it's yeah, habit. Yeah. Um, I wasn't speeding. No, I just took it off. I swear to God, I, I have a camera. I have a camera. I can play it for you. Because it's habit. When I stop the car and put it in park, I take it off. Because my husband owns a dealership. Okay. So does that mean you can just put dealer tags on any vehicle that you own? No, we're going to sell it. Usually, whenever yes. it's for a dealer or if they're showing the vehicle, which yeah. is neither of the, of the, it's, it's not neither case right now. After Miss Maddie pointed out her dash cam, the officer suddenly shifted focus to another aspect of the stop. According to the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles website, a dealer tag can indeed be utilized by the dealer's family or employees for personal purposes. This officer clearly has no idea what he's talking about and is presenting his speculations about dealer tags as facts. No, oh, he's going to sell it. I'm just test driving it. Are you now? Okay, well you just said this is your car. No, it's, of course, I'm driving it, so I have to have insurance on it and stuff. Okay, well you said this is your car. I asked you if this is your vehicle and you said yes. But there should be a reason why you should have a dealer tag on there just because your husband on there just because your husband. Well, right the now I'm driving it, so it's not like. Do you want me to call my husband? You can talk to him. I go up with what well, you tell me. You tell me that this is your vehicle. You still live on Country Place Road? Yeah. All right, bring me with you. Uh huh. I swear I was wearing a habit. you also start driving cars at this time. Huh? Put a put a real tag on your vehicle, not dealer tag, okay? Okay, but I swear I have okay. The officer departed the scene without giving Miss Maddie any citations, showcasing the significance of a dash cam. Without it, 
This officer might have sparked a prolonged legal dispute rooted solely in erroneous information and misapplication of the law. The subsequent video on Sean Chavez's channel similarly highlights an officer's misapplication of the law, underscoring the accountability provided by a dash cam when officers are uncooperative and misinformed. Officer departed the scene without issuing Miss Maddie any citations. This situation falls under California Vehicle Code 25950, which clearly states that emitted light from all lamps and reflectors visible from the front of a vehicle must be white or yellow. Mr. Chavez has previously been stopped multiple times for his headlights and has proven in municipal court that they are legal. He is more than well prepared for this interaction with the court documents and the exact statute on hand ready to show Officer Lamelli. However, the officer's ego won't allow him to let go that easily. Yeah, it's not that safe. Find any law that prohibits altering headlights to affect their performance. There's no such statute in the California Vehicle Code. It's likely that Officer Lamella is misinformed. Mr. Chow Bachan has done everything possible to address the officer's concerns. By refusing to acknowledge the court documents, this officer is essentially saying that the judge is wrong. In court, the judge reviews all relevant statutes, ordinances, and case law pertaining to the case. If the statute Officer Lamley is seeking existed, the judge would have considered it before ruling the lights legal. Give me one sec, alright? Alright. My partner's gonna check your uh, license, make sure it's all valid and stuff. Oh. I just went through this like two weeks ago with Le Bleu, right here, probably 200 yards from here. Yeah, that's right, but that's that's a different section that he cited you for. He didn't that cite me. That section doesn't apply to altering your the performance of the headlights. Le Bleu looked it up, he couldn't find anything, he let me go. Well, good for him. Officer Lamele currently thinks he comprehends the legality of this interaction better than a municipal judge and several fellow officers, including his district's head and a watch commander. His pride and ego hinder his capacity to impartially execute his duties and adhere to the letter of the law rather than his individual interpretations of it. Actually, I'm not. I'd, I'd rather leave them that way. I, I really believe that they're lawful. I went to court on it. I checked with the Sergeant Chandler here at this district. I checked with the watch commander at CHP. And I really, truly believe that they're lawful. I, if you're... You've taken the time out to stop me for this. If you want to cite me for it, I'd like to get a citation for it so that I can make sure that it's documented properly. Okay. So if you can cite me for a vehicle code that's relevant to these headlights, I'd like that. Because then other, if I'm not going to be cited for it, this is a complete waste of time. It's a violation of my Fourth Amendment rights to travel free. While one might argue that this stop constitutes a Fourth Amendment violation, Officer Lamelli sincerely believes that Mr. Chavez Jean is engaged in wrongdoing and would likely not face repercussions for his actions. In the 2014 case of High and V, North Carolina, the Supreme Court ruled that officers who make reasonable mistakes while carrying out their duties cannot be held accountable for the broader implications of their misunderstandings. The court further stated that while ignorance of the law is generally not an excuse, this does not mean that a reasonable mistake of law cannot justify an investigatory stop. This decision provides officers with a vaguely defined margin for error, which can serve as justification for improper traffic stops and indirectly incentivizes ignorance among officers. Not a violation because you committed as alleges that the Fresno Police Department is negligently allowing multiple stops without preventative measures. Officer Lamelli may not be personally liable for targeted stops, but the department fails to educate its officers on legalities. Consequently, Mr. Chavez feels victimized. It's uncertain if the officer's refusal to issue a citation stems from ego or to avoid legal confrontation. Fortunately, dashcam footage could support harassment claims in a lawsuit. So, Can I please have a citation? Without receiving a citation, Yet armed with sufficient evidence to build a case for harassment and negligence in a courtroom, courtesy of his dash cam, Mr. Chavez later remarked that he had no intentions of pursuing legal action against the department or the officer. Dash cams provide an unparalleled level of transparency and security in police interactions. Many traffic violations hinge solely on an officer's observations and perceptions. 
dash cams level the playing field for drivers, enabling citizens to challenge officers' claims and provide just as much, if not more, evidence for both sides of the story. The era of fabricating false traffic infractions to justify pulling over innocent civilians is a thing of the past. A new era of transparency, accountability, and civilian safety is emerging with the widespread use of dash cameras. The security and peace of mind offered by a dash cam can be likened to an alarm system for your home or vehicle. Investing in a dash cam now could potentially save you money and perhaps even your life in the future. On March 25, 2015, Tony Soto, a 28-year-old resident of Philadelphia, was pulled over by Philadelphia Police Officer Holloway near the 6,700 block of Taurus Dale Avenue, just outside the Philadelphia metro area. This encounter concludes in an unusual and rather solemn manner, so I recommend watching the video through to the end. So tenant windows, right? That's the reason why you all stopped my vehicle? Tenant windows. Order. All right, I'll have a temp permit from the state of PennDOT. That's what I'm going to show you first. That invalidates your traffic stop, sir. All right, what's your second reason? Your headlights, sir. My headlights what? What's wrong with my headlights? Your headlight is out. Oh, no, it's not. Both my headlights are on. But I can still see your team work. Well, no, you can't. You'll see the temp permit and you'll see my identification, but you won't see the vehicle registration because your traffic stop is invalidated. I'm my no. In 1979, the Supreme Court ruled that officers need probable cause to stop a vehicle for a license and registration check, as established in Delaware v. Prowse. Nearly two decades later, the Supreme Court reaffirmed this principle in what could be seen as a related precedent to Prowse, the 1996 case of Ren v. United States, in the Wren case, the court dismissed the idea that the subjective intentions of police officers influence stops made with probable cause. Here's a snippet from the unanimous opinion delivered by Justice Scalia. Petitioners do not dispute that the police had probable cause to believe that they had violated the D.C. traffic code. Instead, they advance a new argument that in the unique context of civil traffic uh, regulations, probable cause is simply not enough. Automobile use, they say, is so heavily and minutely regulated that total compliance is nearly impossible. Almost all motorists frequently commit technical violations. The danger of approving all traffic stops based on probable cause, they claim, is that it creates a temptation for the police to use traffic stops as a means of investigating other law violations, as to which no probable cause exists, and enables the police to single out disfavored groups for unwelcome police attention. For this reason, petitioners argue, the Fourth Amendment test for traffic stops should be not simply whether probable cause existed to justify the stop, but rather whether a police officer acting reasonably would have made the stop for the reason given. In earlier cases, we have effectively rejected the notion that the constitutionality of traffic stops depends upon the actual motivations of the individual officers involved. The court rejected the defense's argument that it's okay for officers to pull someone over if they can't comply with vehicle laws. They said an officer's intentions don't matter as long as they have a good reason to stop someone. This decision means cops can pull you over for small violations in the hopes of finding bigger crimes, which raises concerns about why they're really pulling people over. Some people think Mr. Soto was targeted because of his activist connections even though Officer Holloway had a reason to pull Soto over for his tinted windows and busted headlight, it wasn't okay to keep him once he showed paperwork for the tint and proved his lights were fine. Most courts agree that once cops' suspicions are cleared and there's no crime, they can't keep you detained. I see your paperwork. You don't tell me whether my stop is well, valid or not. Well, I'm telling you right now, Officer Holloway. Huh? Huh? All right, here's the, uh, sir, you don't have the right to open my door. This car has video monitoring, I'll just so your, you know. Your, your video okay, monitor. you don't have the right to open my door, so you're violating my constitutional right now. I'm still out of here. Sir, I don't have to step out the vehicle. I'll see your uh, video monitor. For my safety and your safety, I'm going to sit in this vehicle and I'm requesting your supervisor now. You're going to request a supervisor. All right, let me give you my paperwork for the vehicle. Well, my temp permit and my identification. That's number one. My driver's license is number one. All right. Fire marshal identification, that's number two and badge to go with it.
Mr. Soto presented a fire marshal ID and badge to the officer, alongside his identification. It wasn't until Mr. Soto posted a video of the interaction that the Philadelphia Police Department realized the badge was fake and that he wasn't a fire marshal. Upon further investigation, the PPD found that Mr. Soto had a prior conviction for impersonating a police officer in 2008. Three years later, he was arrested again for the same offense, but the case was dismissed because Pennsylvania's impersonation laws differ from those of other states. Specifically, Pennsylvania's Code 49, 12 states that impersonating a public servant is only a crime if the individual benefits from it. Mr. Soto wasn't charged for impersonating the fire marshal, and it's doubtful that charging him under Code 49, 12, would succeed in court. However, this situation does raise ethical concerns about Mr. Soto's behavior during the interaction and in the past. And I'm requesting a supervisor. Can you call for your supervisor, sir? Yes, I did, sir. Thank you. Can you, job, Can you shut you. my door, please? Oh, yeah, that's accurate, too. That's who I work for, just so you know. We're gonna stop all this nonsense with you guys down here just stopping people and doing whatever you want. So that's that's done. Turn your high beam on now. You said my high beams? Your high beams. So, what? Alright, not a problem. Second suggestion is that my vehicle headlights uh one of my headlights was off, sound like similar to the Brandon Tate Brown issue, you know, but uh, both my headlights are functioning properly, requested a supervisor at 728. At this juncture, Mr. Soto has sufficiently addressed the officer's suspicions, and Officer Holloway lacks the authority to prolong his detainment. Mr. Soto notes that this situation parallels the Brandon Tate Brown incident, referencing a contentious 2014 police shooting involving 26-year-old Brandon Tate Brown in which officers were exonerated of any misconduct. Mr. Tate Brown was fatally shot by officers from the 15th District in Philadelphia, the same district to which Officer Holloway and his partner belong. Following Mr. Tate Brown's death, Mr. Soto became deeply involved in civil rights activism, asserting that he was already recognized and disliked by the Philadelphia Police Department before this encounter occurred. And uh, refused to give him the paperwork to the vehicle because the state of Pennsylvania, for the reason why he's stopping me, uh, invalidates his traffic stop uh, for for stopping a vehicle just for the sole purposes of uh, sunscreening, in which pen dot, I, have I have a pen dot exemption. Thank you. I work for that today. You can stop him for the sole purpose of uh, vehicle temp, 4524. Oh, you can stop, but once I present paperwork to you invalidating well, I, I your traffic the stop, there's, you well, I showed it to you, you refused to look yeah, at it. You didn't give me the, I wasn't stepping okay. into your vehicle. You don't have to step in. I can hold it right here and you can flash can, your flashlight. I'll do it again. tell me what I can see, sir. I can tell you whatever I want because you're a public servant and you work for me. I pay my I taxes. You pay, I pay, look, I pay my taxes. You work for me. I don't work for right. you. You work for me. Uh, well, tonight you work for me, Officer Holloway. I'm right. All you, right. Sir. That's why you're standing there waiting for your supervisor and I'm sitting here. And I'm perfect. All right. It's not a problem. And I'm, I'll be down here all day and every other day after that and every time you stop me. Here we go. Sunscreen permit again, just so you can see. Well, I haven't seen it. You can show all right. it whatever camera here you go. Here's the seal from the state of Pennsylvania right here. Do me a favor. Huh? Officer Holloway pulls over Mr. Soto, reads a medical exemption paper, but then unexpectedly leaves the scene without explaining why. Mr. Soto, who's known for his activism, gains attention for his run-ins with the cops, but eventually gets arrested for pretending to be a cop himself and other stuff. His mom starts a Justice for Tony Soto page on Facebook, but it gets taken over by someone else after she dies. Despite Mr. Soto's questionable actions, the Philly cops get criticized for how they handled things. Officer Holloway's behavior is called out as unprofessional and Mr. Soto's activism is seen as risky because he pretended to be someone he wasn't. Still, folks give him props for keeping his cool during the encounter and folks are encouraged to dig deeper into his story. Thank you for watching our video on saving citizens from corrupt cops' misconduct. We hope this message spreads and raises awareness about the importance of transparency and accountability within law enforcement. 
Contribute to the community by subscribing, liking, and sharing this video to spread the message and encourage positive action. Let's work together to make the world a fairer place.